wonderful job they've done. And I, I appreciate everything that's been said here tonight. But just a little something that's been on my mind, I'll, I'll get out of the way. The Song of Songs, chapter 2 and verse 15, it says these very familiar words, Take us the foxes, the little foxes, that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. That's all I want to read. Take us the foxes, the little foxes, that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. And the word translation really means catch the, catch the little foxes before they spoil the vine. And, and I thought about that, you know, because the devil, the devil will try to introduce little things into our life. He will try to bring in, it's not, it's not uh, uh, so obvious. It's things that are, that are tricky. That's why the Bible says to put on the whole armor of God that you can stand against the wiles or the tricks of the devil. The devil is, is always trying to destroy you. There is a demons, demon or demons uh, that, are, that their job is to try to sidetrack you, to try to destroy you, to try to lead you away from the house of God, away from the word of God, away from God himself. And your ultimate destruction is what they're looking for. And you've got to be careful, but you've got to be aware of them. And you've got to catch the little foxes that, that spoils the vine. And notice he says it's the little foxes. He didn't say it's the elephants that come in and trample down the, the vines. But he said it's the little foxes. The little things. The little things that, that you think is just not that important. Little things that, that, you, that you would never dream would lead you uh, uh, into a backslid condition. You've got to be so careful of that. That's why we try to preach. That's why we don't preach this prosperity gospel about your happiness. I'm not concerned so much about your happiness here as I am your happiness there. One of these days, like Sister Cora said, there's, that we're going to go to a place. John said, I saw a new heaven, a new earth. First heaven and first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. And I, John, saw that holy city. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and God will dwell with them and be their God, and they shall be His people. And He shall wipe every tear from their eye. There shall be no more sorrow, nor crying, nor pain, for the former things have passed away. This world is, is full of pain and sorrow and misery, but, but we, we're not focused on this world. We're focused on that world. We're looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We're in a race tonight. And we've not, re we've not reached the finish line. We are simply in a race right now. And I'm not trying to outrun you. But I am trying to outrun the world, the flesh, and the devil. And if they overtake me, I'll be destroyed. So you've got to be very careful about the little foxes. Not the big things. Not the elephants that's going to trample them down. You would see that a mile away. But it's the little things. The little things that begin to sneak in. The little things that you let slide. And what he's telling them here is he says catch them. Catch the little foxes. Don't, don't think that that little fox out there is, is pretty. Don't think it's, it's something that, that oh look how sweet because it's not. It leads to destruction. We're rural people around here. We've all raised a garden, most of us. If you've seen a coon out in your corn patch, you wouldn't think, well, look how pretty that is. Go get me a camera. You say, go get me a twenty two rifle or a shotgun. Let's get that stupid thing out of there. Because you know just as sure as that one's there today, tomorrow there'll be 25 there. And in one night, they'll wipe your corn patch out if you, if you let them stay. So first track you see, it doesn't matter. You may have to break the law of the land, but go out there and catch that thing and kill it and get rid of it because it will destroy, it will destroy in the natural. That's the same thing here. When you see things beginning to creep in, catch it. Be on guard for it. Make sure that, that you stop it before it, it turns into a stronghold in your life. He said it's the little foxes, they spoil the vine or they spoil the fruit. Now the Bible tells us what fruit is, what our fruit as a Christian should be. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Those are the fruit of the Spirit. When you, when you see anything that is beginning to take your love, make sure you catch the fox that's destroying that love. He told them in the, in the, uh, to the church of Ephesus in the book of Revelation, he said you have left your first love. You're losing that love. You by, by default, by, by leaving it, you're losing it. But you've left your first love. When you see the love beginning, beginning to wane, when you see that love beginning to dwindle away, make sure you catch the box that's destroying that. 
And I'll say that. Last night I preached about family. You know, about the only thing anybody remembers is that I said called, uh, uh, Sarah called Abraham Lord. So that's about the only thing anybody remembers. But I also talked about uh, men wearing dresses and everything else. So, but, but you know, we, we was talking about that, about, about the family. So uh, listen, whenever that first love begins to wane, make sure you do whatever it takes to get that love back. And that's in your family. That's not just talking about spiritual matters. That's also talking uh, from a natural standpoint in your own marriage. When you see something that is, that is happening to your marriage, don't turn a blind eye to that. Deal with that. Work on that. Work on your marriage. Marriage is not, is not a one-sided deal. It's both sides. Amen? You can't have a good marriage if one's wanting to work and the other one is not wanting to. If you're done with that person there, uh, no matter what they do, they can stand on their head. And, and if you're done with them, it's hard, to, it's hard to get it back. But let me say this, marriage is very important. And a marriage value you take before God is very important. And the love you have for your husband or wife or your children, if you see that, if you see that beginning to grow cold, you need to catch the fox that's causing that problem. Because there's something there. There's a problem there. Somewhere something's creeping in. This little stuff that goes on, this little bit of flirting and stuff that goes on at work or out in the world, that all that is the fox that's going to destroy your marriage. That bat in the eye is not, that's a fox. And make sure you deal with that fox and make sure you catch it, kill it, get it out of your face because it will destroy you. A lot of Christianity is just common sense. You know, really. It's just common sense stuff. But it's little foxes. So if you've lost your love, he told, he told the church of Ephesus, he said, repent quickly, or I will come and remove the candlestick from out of its place. What's the word repent mean? It means to turn. From going one way to turn and go another way. So if you see the love in your marriage beginning to grow cold, you need to repent. You need to turn around Turn back and try to figure out what you can do to fix your marriage. What you can do to fix a relationship with a, with a brother or a sister that's strained. If you say you love God and you hate your brother, you're a liar. Amen? You can't hate your brother and love God. It's, it's impossible. So in every aspect, you've got to deal with the little foxes. Love and joy. If you've lost your joy, there's a fox there that stole your joy. Catch it. Look at it. Examine your own life. It's so easy for us to look at everybody else's life. We can line people up and, and give them uh, one right after another, make a judgment call against somebody else. But what about ourselves? Because if we've lost our joy, and the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength, and we've lost our joy, then we've lost our strength. You can't be strong if you have no joy. So what do you do about it? Examine your life. Find out where you, where you begin to lose your joy and go back to where you had joy and begin to work from there. Love, joy, and peace. You know, it goes on, but, but those are the big three. Love, joy, and peace. Why do, why do so many people, why have they lost their peace? And they have. This year alone, we have saw more people lose their peace than any other time I'd say that, that you will ever know about. People that have made their boast and their brag about being strong Christians are holed up in a house right now scared of their own shadow and they know no peace at all. Amen. I'm not throwing that down at, at anybody. I'm just saying that is not peace. That's not living. If you call yourself a Christian and, and hiding away from everything out there when your job as a Christian is to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. If that's your job, how are you going to do that hiding in a house? The Great Commission is going to all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. How are you going to do it hiding away? How are you? But the Bible says that that light is not to be put in under a bushel. You don't light a candle and hide it away. I'm just saying, why? What? What has happened to people's peace? Let me tell you what's happened to it. Tell me I'm wrong. If every one of us would turn off the TV, turn off the news feed, quit getting on social media and looking at all the talking heads out there that are trying to create fear in God's people, 
How many of us would it even have affected if we didn't know there was a virus out there? Amen? Oh, you say, well, but this one, this one, this, this one, that. It's always, they've always been that. They've always been disease. They've always been uh, pestilences. They've always been something. They've always, in every year, every generation, has to fight some sort of pandemic. The AIDS pandemic back years ago, one by one, you can go down the line of things we've had to face, but I never saw it to where we have to hide, to where we have to social distance, to where we have to wear a stinking mask to go out in public and stay away from everybody. That's all you've got to do is lose your peace. Amen. We've lost the church. It's a fox. What are you going to do about it? You deal with it. You catch the little fox. If you don't, it's going to keep right on. We've said that six months ago. I'll still stand here right now and tell you that. Those young Christians, don't, they don't even have to be young Christians. The ones that have laid out for six months, I wouldn't want to be in their shoes right now. And that's not, I know some of the older ones, I'm, I'm fully aware of that. But I'm going to tell you this by and large, I wouldn't want to be the one that's laid out for six months scared of my shadow. I'd be afraid that my faith in God, something's happened to it. Somewhere my oil has leaked out of the vessel and there's no light shining there. Now remember the five foolish virgins? The call came at midnight. Everything looked right. They all, they all were virgins. They all had the, had the garment on. They all had a lamp. They all at one time had oil. They all slumbered. They all slept. Everything about them looked the same. Except there was no light burning there. No oil left to light that vessel. It had dwindled away and they lost it and didn't even realize they lost it. Amen? There's some little things out there that are destroying people. I, I thought today, you know, I, I love history, but... Well, what was it, 57 year ago, was it 1963, November 22nd, 1963, when John F. Kennedy was shot? Something that was less than an ounce just uh, changed human history. Something less than an ounce when Lee Harvey Oswald shot, 1230, shot there in the motorcade at John F. Kennedy, it changed history. All, you can go through, through history and look at little things. World War I was started because of an assassination of a, of, of a dignitary. It was all because of little things. And I'm saying the same thing has happened in the church house. It's little things. Little things that are changing. Little things that have been introduced that we've, that we've let slide. And we don't realize what's happening to us. There's an old proverb. It says, for one of a nail, the shoe was lost. For one of a shoe, the horse was lost. For one of a horse, the rider was lost. For one of the rider, the message was lost. For one of the message, the battle was lost. For one of the battle, the kingdom was lost. And it said, and all for the want of a horseshoe nail. Because one little thing led to something else that led to something else that led to something else that led on. And finally, it was the whole kingdom was destroyed because of something little. In our Christian life, it's not going to be the elephants that's going to destroy us. It's going to be the little foxes. The little things that come in, that sneak in, that, that we are not paying attention to. We're not watching. We're not looking. And all because we let things slide, where it's going to end up destroying a lot of people. The Bible talks about strongholds, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and it talks about uh, being mighty through God, the tearing down of strongholds. A stronghold is when Satan sets up a, a, a strong barrier in your mind or sets up a fortified position in your mind and you let things come in. Those, don't, those do not appear overnight. Strongholds in your life come because of little foxes that are, let, that are let go. That are not dealt with, not dealt with properly. We put it off some other time I'll deal with that. And after a while those strongholds set up in mind in your life. And I thought it's ironic that the Song of Solomon, that Solomon himself who would talk about the little foxes. The little things creeping in. That they need to catch them and need to deal with them. Because they'll destroy the vine. Have you ever read the end of Solomon's life? It's one of the most tragic, one of the most pitiful excuses of an end of a life that you could imagine. Solomon, who had more wisdom than any man on the face of the earth, who had more wealth, more riches, who was blessed and anointed of God, 
The Bible says that it was his wives that led his heart away. Began to worship pagan idols at the end of his life. Worship Molech. Worship the demon God where they sacrificed children. Solomon was there in the service when they sacrificed the children. Who would have thought it? Because a little fox crept in. And I thought today, you know, I, I believe this is how it worked out. Because Solomon, after all, he had, uh, what was it, 700 wives and 300 concubines or vice versa. And one's plenty. <laughs> one, one would be plenty for him. But he brought all these, all these, uh, all these other, uh, other, other cultures, brought the princes in. It was to, in those times, it was to acquire power. I know that. But he had all these wives that he had began to lead his heart away. And I wonder how it went the first time. I wonder how this man that had talked to God, that had had a dream and God appeared so real to him that whenever he dedicated the temple, he made a prayer and the glory of God came down into that magnificent uh, temple that Solomon built so much that, that the ministers could not even go in to the house of God. This man that knew God. How? How did, he, how did he end up at a, at a demon-possessed priest watching him go through the ritual to a pagan idol as opposed to God? And I believe in one of his wives one day because it says his wives led his heart away. And I believe one of them said, well, why don't you just at least go to it? You know, you, I, I know you worship Yahweh. You worship Jehovah God. I know that. But why don't you just... Just go to one of the just go to one of the rituals. Go to one of the services. It ain't going to hurt you that much. Amen. And he got there, and at first, I believe it made him sick to watch what they was doing. The little fox had got in, began to gnaw on that vine, and little by little, and he went back again. And he went back again, and before long, he's worshiping the host of heaven. He never dreamt he would be there. I say the same thing when I speak out against. All these, all these um, false teachers, all these Joe Osteens of the world that smiles with you and, and are not worried about your holiness whatsoever. We got people in this church that wash out, out over that ignorance. I've seen their Facebook post. I've seen that. That is all that is the little fox that's got in your vineyard. You start going on with that prosperity nonsense and I'm telling you all you've done is allowed a fox into your vineyard and it's going to destroy you. You've got to know the Word of God and you've got to know what is right and what is wrong and rightly divide the Word of truth and discern the spirits whether they be of God. Those, those mega preachers that live in a 60,000 square foot house and have private jets and everything, you tell me they're doing that because their love of God. I don't believe that for a second. Solomon's wife said, why don't you just go to one of them? Why don't you just listen? A charismatic person could do a lot of damage. That's why I've said we always guard this pulpit. Not everybody that packs a Bible under their arm, not every person that comes in this country and everybody washes out over, listen to their theology. Listen to what they hold to. Listen to their doctrine. Listen to if it lines up with the Word of God, line upon line, precept upon precept. If it don't, stay away from it because it's a fox that will destroy your vine. The Bible says, Paul said, when I'm gone, there'll be grievous wolves that come in. Grievous wolves that are going to come in and destroy the flock and scatter them. Be on guard. Watch for that. Boy, it got quiet when I said there's some here that goes on with that, that gets wrapped up in that stuff. But I've seen it. I've seen it myself. I've seen it with my own eyes. That may not affect you, but it affects me. I'm a shepherd. My job, that's what the word pastor means, means the shepherd of a flock. It's my job as a shepherd to make sure that there's no foxes that's, that's creeping into your vineyard. When people ask me, and they say, well, can you help me? You know, I've had people call me, can, can you help me? Yeah, let me help you. You've not been to church in six months. You, you, you're in and out. You come for a few weeks and you go back out and you don't come back for four months. Then you come back dragging in like the prodigal son 700 times and you come back and want me to help you. Yeah, I can help you. Set some traps. Get rid of that stinking fox out of your vineyard because it's killing the vine. It's killing you and it'll send you to hell. 
That's the truth. You, you go to a doctor, you don't ask the doctor to, to uh, tickle your ears for you. You want to know the truth. Well, there are foxes that are creeping in that's destroying God's people. That people are letting things slide. That they're letting things slide in the church that 60 years ago in the secular world would not even have been accepted. Things that come in, things that are allowed to come in and stand in the pulpit uh, 60 years ago, they wouldn't even let them, they wouldn't even televise it on TV. And now they brought it into the house of God. Why? Because little foxes that's come in. Little things that, sn that sneaked in. And what, what the church has tried to do is the church has tried to go along with what the world does. I don't need what the world's got. If I have to have a light show and a fog machine and strobe lights and rock music to get you saved, it's, you're not going to get saved anyhow. If that's what I've got to have, then I'm done with this. It'll work. It's always worked. That you preach the word, Paul told Timothy. He said, preach that word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. If we ever saw a time like that, we're at that time right now where people don't want sound doctrine. But I got to say, I got to say, look, Bork, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'd say we're probably the biggest congregation in Morgan County, and we preach it as hard as as hard as we can even get by preaching it. I said at this point, I don't even know. Uh, somebody asked me, well, how many mad faces did we get last night? I said, none. I can't even make people mad anymore. But I'll keep trying. Don't worry about it. We'll keep on trying it. But I'm not saying it to be mean. I'm not trying saying it to make you mad. I'm saying it because there's a fox in your vineyard. And when there are fox in your vineyard and you don't deal with it, there'll be another fox there. And after a while, you're going to have a whole herd of foxes that's going to be there. And if you don't deal with it, because it's the little things, the little things that begin to slide. Remember Eve. Eve, all, all Satan had to do with Eve is to plant a little bit of doubt in her mind. He asked her the question, did God really say that? And she sits back and thinks, you know what, I, I don't really remember exactly what he said. I, it was something about that tree. But did God really say that? He said, but you know in the day that you eat it, you'll be like God's and you'll get, a, you get to decide what's good and evil. And the next thing you know, she's pulling a, a whatever, whatever kind of fruit that was. She's pulling it off that branch, taking a bite of it. Why? Because a little fox, a little doubt was a little fox that crept in. A little bit of jealousy when Cain looked at his brother, uh, when uh, Cain and Abel both offered a sacrifice to the Lord. And there as one as one uh, kills this lamb here, this butchered lamb with blood everywhere that represented Christ that would come forth a thousand years later. And he looks over and the fire has fell on that lamb. And he's got, a, he's got the most beautiful fodder shock you ever saw. The best fruit, everything that he could pile on this altar. And there's no fire on it. And he begins to get jealous. And God even speaks to him. And he said, Cain, if you do good, will you not be accepted? But if you don't, sin lies at the door. Means waiting like a tiger, waiting, crouching by the door, waiting to consume you because you allowed jealousy to come in. Hear me, church. Jealousy is a little fox. Envy is a little fox that will destroy many vines. Many a people has been destroyed that's known the touch of God, known the power of the Holy Ghost, known, known what salvation was. And that little fox got turned loose in their vineyard and they never dealt with it. And jealousy has killed a lot of people. And the Bible says that jealousy is crueler than the grave. David one day walked out on a rooftop, looked and saw a woman taking a bath. And it was one thing to walk by and see it, but it was another thing when he took the second glance. And then he started looking, and then next thing you know, he's knocking on the door. A little bit of lust, a little bit of lust out there was a fox that just about destroyed one of the greatest men of God that ever lived. I'm telling you that if you've got lust in your heart, it's a fox that will destroy you. You've got to deal with these things. Judas, Judas Iscariot. One of them chosen by the Lord Himself. Walked with the Lord for three years. Saw Him saw Him do these great miracles. Raise Lazarus. Open the blinded eyes. Had saw Him heal the leper and raise up the lame man. But Judas, uh, the Bible says, Satan entered Judas Iscariot. 
And Judas began to look at that money, and, he, and the Bible says he was a thief. And he let that little bit of greed, that little fox, begin to come in. You say, well, what's that got to do with anything? Because there's a lot of little foxes that's trying to get in. Because what the devil is coming along and enticing people, and he's doing it with the young Christians because he's saying, here, you can get by. You know, you don't have to be at church. You can watch it on Facebook. You've got this job that offers more money and it offers, you've got to be away from church. You've got to be away from your family. What, what good's that doing? Let me speak to you pretty straight. Facebook, because a lot of them ain't here. What good is that going to do for you to be away from your family, away from the church house, and the only thing it's going to do is cause you to backslide and go to hell, and it's going to cause your family to be busted up, and you're going to destroy your marriage, you're going to destroy your life, and you're going to destroy your soul over a little fox that you know how to deal with, and you just don't want to deal with it. Amen? Amen. You catch that little fox before it destroys your vine. Amen? You deal with it because there's some little things there. Listen, the company you keep can become a little fox. The ones you surround yourself with. You can't, you can't uh, love the world and love God. The Bible tells me and you that to love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Be careful of those that you uh, surround yourself with. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, it says, Be not deceived, evil communication, corrupt good manners. That means that bad company, corrupt, uh, corrupt uh, good habits. That bad company corrupts good habits. How many people out there, if it hadn't been for peer pressure, you would have never got on drugs to begin with? If it hadn't been for wanting to look cool, you would have never put a cigarette in your mouth the first time. If it hadn't been for looking cool, you'd have never took the first swig of alcohol. If it hadn't been for the peer pressure and the people that you was around, how many, how many are in hell right now because of the company that they was around? That's why we want to build the youth group at this church house. We want them to have good role models. We want them to be able to surround themselves by godly young men and godly young women. That way out there in the world, they don't have to impress anybody. You want to impress somebody, impress us how you pray. Impress us of how you read the Word of God. Impress us on how you can serve God. That's what we need to be impressed with. Amen. Your reputation can be destroyed because of the little foxes. Ecclesiastes 10 and 1, dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. He says, so doth a little folly, a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. And he was saying these ones that, that had a reputation for wisdom and honor, it says that little things and a little folly, just like a flies in the ointment. About empty. Just like a fly. You, you put a fly in that thing and you let it sit there and it'll corrupt the whole thing. A little fly will, will corrupt every bit of that. So will the, the, a bad reputation surrounding yourself by people dealing, uh, dealing wrong with people around you uh, that people would look at you and, and your reputation would be destroyed because something that was done in just in the moment uh, just in that moment when you tried to fit in, you said something, you got involved with that. Listen, if you're around people and they're carrying on with filth and nonsense, don't stay around that. That is a little fox. It'll destroy your reputation. It'll destroy your witness. Amen. You realize that Christians are being examined with a magnifying glass. When you walk out these doors, no, let's say while you're in these doors, and the reason I'm here tonight is because they was men that I saw that would shout under the anointing of God that I'd see God get a hold of, that I had confidence in in this church house, and I wanted what they've got. That applies outside too. Because you mark it down, you can live, you can live for God all that time, but one failure, one slip up, one mess up will destroy your reputation. It will destroy your witness and people will have no confidence in you. Know how to carry yourself 
in honor. That's what the word temperance at the end of the, of the uh, gifts of the Spirit or the fruit of the Spirit is temperance, meaning being able to hold yourself in honor, being able to hold yourself from doing anything that would be against God's will. The little things, the little foxes, the little sins. The Bible talks about in Romans chapter 2 and verse 5, it says, But after the hardness and impenitent heart, Treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. What's that mean? That means like a credit card, a little here, a little there. I remember a few years ago we had a we had a Visa card and it was hooked to it was hooked to certain things like I, I, maybe the one call was on it, several things that was on it, little purchases, nothing big, a, a little place here and there where we didn't have a regular credit card that we had to use it for. And one day I asked Shonda what the bill was, and she told me, and I about fell over. I thought, I can't believe it. We got, it, we got that took care of. But, but I couldn't believe it because I thought, what in the world did we buy that was, that was all that money? But it wasn't all that money. It was a little here, a little there, a few dollars here, a few dollars there. And after a while, those things start adding up. Well, the sin, the little foxes, that begins to creep in. And a little here and a little there. And all it is is you're treasuring up for yourself wrath against the day of wrath. Those little sins that just don't seem that important. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 9, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. A little, a little sin, a little bit leavens the rest of it. See, we got to, you got to deal with that before it gets too far. Little slumber. We talked about it last night. Somebody say, oh no. <laughs> last night, last night we was talking about laziness. And I, I'll say it again, I have no respect for a lazy person. We was made to work. Every one of us, men and women, was made to work. And the Bible says that when laziness, it says Solomon said a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, and so your poverty shall come. Just, just fold your hands, sit back, take, your, take a little nap, just let some things go, a little sleep, a little slumber, and it says the poverty will come. And what Solomon was doing is, as he wrote the, as he wrote the Proverbs, he, he said, I went by the field of the slothful. I went by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And at one time, that was a beautiful vineyard. That was a beautiful, uh, that was a beautiful stone wall. That was a beautiful fence there. It was a magnificent house standing there. He said, I walked by this, this, this place that used to be so great. But he said, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, and the poverty shall come. And he says, and when I went by, he said, it was all covered over with thorns and nettles covered the face thereof. And the stone wall was broken down. Why? Because of neglect. Catch the fox. Look at your own life, and I need to look at my life, and look around and see if you see any fox tracks. And if you do, get some traps. I know how to set some traps. Brother Marty, I know uh, back there Leroy was talking about uh, trapping. He knows how to do it. What you do is you find out where they're at and you deal with it. Look around and see if there's any fox tracks. Don't worry about going to somebody else's vineyard. you got enough to deal with on, you, on your own. Amen. Let's get, the, let's get the log out of our own eye and then we can worry about picking the sawdust out of somebody else's eye. You start picking on everybody else around you, you better be careful. Somebody might start picking on you. We better be careful about those things. Let's look in our own garden. Let's look in our own vineyard and see if there are any fox tracks. See if you see it any hair there where they're crawling under the fence. Because I'm afraid if we're not careful, we're letting some foxes get in. They're sneaky. Oh, they're hard to see. You can't... Can't hardly see them, but if you if you if you're looking for them, you can find them. Amen. These little things, church. I could go on and on with that, but it, it's these these little things, and that's all I'm giving you tonight. And I'm about done while they come to get a song. It's just simply little foxes. You need to catch the little foxes, the ones that are trying to destroy you, the little things that that sometimes are so overlooked. Because the little foxes can spoil the vine. There's also some little things that, that are great. The Bible talks about if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain here, 
be removed, be plucked up, thrown into the sea. You could say to the sycamine tree, be plucked up, thrown into the sea. If you have faith, there's a grain of a mustard seed. So little things can destroy you, but little things can also pull you out of it. The faith is a grain of a mustard seed. Me and John, there was a message today that she wanted me to hear. And boy, it was a, that was a good one. Talking about Elijah and whenever he went up on Mount Carmel and challenged him. And I loved at the end of it. It's called the Rainmaker. But there at the end of it, he was talking about how he went up and put his head between his knees. And he began to pray. You remember when Elijah done that? He just challenged 450 prophets of Baal. 400 prophets of the groves. The rain was coming down. And oh Elijah. Or the rain was about to come down. And he, oh Elijah. Then he walked up. And the fire had fell on the sacrifice. And he walks up. And he puts his head between his knees. It's not rained in three and a half years. And that whenever he tells his servant. He said go and look out over the sea. Tell me what you see. He came back and said I don't see anything. And oh I liked that message today. Because. He said, you know, the thing about it is sometimes you got ones and they're trying to steal your vision from you. They're trying to steal your dream. They're coming along and say, I don't see anything. You know, we say, well, God's blessing the church and you've always got some. Well, I don't really know if it's going to last or not. You know, we say, oh, we've had all these that's pray. Well, I've seen them do that before. <laughs> Amen. Always somebody that's going to try to cut you down. No matter what you do, that's fine. But Elijah, he looks at him. He said, go back again. Goes back in, climbs that mountaintop, looks out over that sea, and it's nothing. Come back, and he said, there's nothing there. Go back again. Again? All right. Walk back up. Third time, nothing. Fourth time, nothing. Fifth time, there's nothing. Sixth time, now come on, Elijah. There's nothing. You keep telling me there's nothing. Walks up the seventh time. He says, go look again. He walks back up that seventh time. He looks out over the sea and there's nothing. And right as he begins to turn his uh, turn back, something catches it out of the corner of his eye. He catches, he catches a glimpse of something. And he sees this little cloud about the size of a man's hand begin to rise out of that sea. And he goes back and he said, there's a little cloud coming. Oh, he said, you better tell Ahab. He better get to Jezreel because the rain is on its way right now. Oh, he didn't have to have something big. He didn't have to have the sky black to say the rain's coming. All he was looking for was a little something. I'm saying the little foxes can destroy your vine, but a little faith in God, a little, a little promise from God, that can go a long way with me and you. If God says He'll do it, God will do it. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. And when He said they're a little cloud, He said you better tell Him. And the Bible says that Ahab began to race toward Jezreel and he had his chariot they was running, those horses was running with everything they had. And about that time, oh, Elijah passed them on foot running. Outrun the horses of Ahab. Outrun the chariot of Ahab. Why? Because he was looking for something. What I'm saying tonight, let's deal with the little foxes. Let's look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let's put our faith and our confidence in God. And I promise you, God will make this thing work. Stand to your feet, if you will, while they begin to sing. I'm asking you tonight a very simple question, very direct question. Are there any fox tracks in your vineyard? Are there anything you need to deal with? Examine yourself, the Bible said, whether you be in the faith. And then Paul said, I don't even let myself examine me. You know why? You don't need you examining you. You need the Holy Ghost to begin to search, turn the searchlight on in your life. Is there anything that's been pushed in the corner? Anything that's been pushed aside and thought someday I'm going to deal with that. That's a fox turned loose. And before long, there are going to be two foxes there. And I just simply ask you tonight, just step out, make your way down here. Let's go fox hunting. Amen. Let's deal with some foxes tonight. Every one of us has got them and every one of us need to be praying. Every one of us. That's without fail. Every one of you and, every, and me included in that. We've got some foxes and it's time to go fox hunting. Let's see what we need to deal with. Because there's some things there, I promise you. I know I've got them. I've got them. I've got to get them things out of there. But I know how to catch them. I know how to set a trap for one of them. We'll catch them little foxes. 
If you really want the foxes gone, you can get them gone. But if you like them, if you like them foxes better than you like the vineyard, then fine, keep them in there. But it's going to destroy everything in your life. So I ask you tonight, deal with them. Deal with the fox tonight. Come on, these altars are open tonight. Find a place to pray. <laughs>